Um, welcome to the show. I am super ecstatic to have you on here. I um, to be here. <laughs> um, so go ahead and introduce who you are and kind of share what you do and what your crochet business is. So I'm Lauren. I am the maker behind a menagerie of stitches. I mostly and pretty much only crochet amigurumi. Um, I'm I'm an author. I have a book. Um, I just I make a bunch of stuff, and that's pretty much me. <laughs> cool. Well, I found your Instagram account. Um, oh, I think it was like almost a year ago, <laughs> and I like. I found you like right before you started your hundred days of Amis last year. And I was, I fell so in love with your account. I was like, that's what I want to be. That's who I want to be. <laughs> Jeez, that's, that's a huge compliment. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And I'm so excited that I get to have one of your like handmade ones. It, it makes me so happy. So how did you get started crocheting? Um, I taught myself how to crochet and it's actually going to be 10 years this year. Nice. So I taught myself 10 years ago, which is crazy. Um, I was at a bookstore with my grandma and she bought me a book on amigurumi and Aww. that's pretty much how it started. Um, she didn't know how to crochet or knit. So I pretty much went to YouTube, found out how to crochet and yeah, yeah. terrible at first, like awful. <laughs> I think we yeah. all Right. My my first um like when I started making amigurumi, my first one was a dog, mm -hmm. and it was so I got a crochet book too and taught myself how to do it. And when I was like when I look back at it, like it was so disproportionate. Like it, the head was supposed to be round, but mine was like a weird oval. Like it looked <laughs> almost like a trumpet head. It was really bad, but somehow I still stuck with it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I just, I taught myself how to crochet and went from like other books and patterns online and just kind of got the hang of it. And I thought, you know, I don't really, I want to make something my own, you know, yeah. I don't you think somebody else's pattern. So I just started kind of designing things that I wanted to make. That's awesome. I, I know I definitely will like look at things and like, I want to make that like, I want to do this myself. I don't want to just be like, oh, yeah, I made someone else's pattern, but I want to make it myself and say yeah. I did it. <laughs> I totally get what you mean because that's the whole thing with, like, there's so many of us that make amigurumi as well. And so, like, if I'm trying to make, like, certain types of animals, I'm like, oh, a couple of my friends make animals. Like, I don't want to be completely, but, you know, an animal only looks like, like, you know, if an otter looks like an otter, like, I'm not going to make it completely different. It's going to look the same. Exactly. You can't, like, completely reinvent an animal <laughs> or a plant. <laughs> as much as we'd like to think that we could. <laughs> yeah, it's different with garments. You can totally change that. But yeah. with yeah. amigurumi, it's pretty, like, Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much, like, there are only so many shapes that you can yeah. make them <laughs> to, and like so many faces to make it still look like the animal that you can do. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, what was your first, what was your first design that you did? Was it your, um, was it those science? The like, chemistry set? Chemistry um, sets, or was it something else? So I first started, well, I've been crocheting for 10 years, but I actually started my Etsy shop back in 2015. So I've only okay. really been doing a business for like four years now. Okay. Okay. Um, so my first like actual thing that I designed for my shop were, um, if you go all the way to the very bottom of my Instagram, <laughs> Which always um, takes so long. <laughs> and it's always kind of embarrassing, too. Like, you don't want to go back that far because it's like, what was I thinking? Those pictures are terrible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so it was a bunny. There were little bunnies that I designed for my shop. And then I actually did um, a couple different cacti as well. I was living in a basement apartment unit, and so I didn't have many. I had, like, a couple windows, and it was always dark, so I just figured I'm going to make my own plants since I can't have real plants. Yeah, yeah. A couple different cacti, and that's what I started selling, and it just kind of went from there, and that's – here I am. <laughs> yeah, I, I love seeing all the different designs that you make. It's so fun, and, like, especially with your – hundred days of Ami like so I 
<laughs> I tried to do the 31 days. Of, like I when that. I, I when, loved Oh, thank you. When I saw you do the 100 days, I was like, okay, maybe I can do this. And I chose to do it during the month that I got married, which was such a bad decision. I was so stressed. I would have moments where I'd just be like crying because I was like, I've got to make this design. And my (laughs) now husband, he was like, it's okay, Claire, you can do it. And I was like, I was literally on the last like few stitches, but I was like, I can't do it. I can't. And he's like, just three more stitches. You're fine. (laughs) Yeah. It's a hundred is a lot. Um, people often ask me, do I already have them? Like recently I've been getting a lot of, cause I'm doing the second round. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, do you already have them made? Are you just like posting them? I'm working like a couple days ahead this time just because it's a little bit easier. Um, I'm stressing out so I can make like a couple today and have the next couple of days to work on other things. Yeah, yeah. So I am, I'm posting them one a day, but I mean, I'm not making one a day. Like I was last time, the first go around, but that was one a day. And it was. Oh. <laughs> but the, I would make them the day before. So I was making one oh, okay. before, and then I would have it ready and I'd take its photo and all that stuff the day Got after. It. Got but it. That was a little stressful. So <laughs> yeah. excited. this time um, I'm just going to make a couple a day and I have a list I go off of. So I just oh, kind nice. of form and like have like I just open up a Word doc and just start typing random things that I want to make. But the funny thing is, I don't normally stick to that list. It's, um, it's true. I, f- I find that, like, when I was making my list of candies and stuff, mm-hmm. I had, like, four months to have been able to have made all of them. Yeah. But I was like, no, I'm going to go work on other stuff, mm-hmm. which I learned, no, I should have, like, made them all ahead of time when doing something yeah. like that. But I definitely found myself, like, I'd have all these ideas, but I, then I would think of a new one and was like, okay, I'm actually going to do that instead. Think it off of what I had planned. It's definitely, um, it's fun. I like doing it and it definitely makes it so I actually, I'm designing something new. Um, so like, I don't even stick to the list sometimes. I'm looking at the list and I'll leave like space for me to write in things that I'm making so I can keep track of it. Yeah, and yeah. I have a lot more penciled in things than I do have things crossed off on the actual list because I just start thinking like, oh, I made this. I'm going to do this now. So it's fun to just kind of brainstorm. Plus, I have my husband that will tell me like, oh, you should make this. And then I'll never make it. And then when I do make it, it's like, why did I wait? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. You're like, he literally gave me an idea. (laughs) So um, last time with the 100 minis, I did the sailboat at the end. And it was the day 100. That was his idea. And it was the big, it was the one that everyone loved. And so I waited till the last day to do it. And then he's wanted me to make a rocket forever. And so then I figured I'm going to do a hundred minis again. The first day is going to be the rocket. I'm just going to get it. (laughs) It was so cute. When I saw that, I just, I'm pretty sure I squealed. and was just like, (laughs) I was was like, oh. And then seeing your otter one, oh my goodness. I was like, oh, I'm. (laughs) dying it's so cute <laughs> I that one was really fun I made that at like I think it was like 12 o'clock at night I'm I'm a night owl so I stay up late and I was just like okay I'm gonna get this done I'm gonna get this yeah done. yeah yeah I want to finish it so there's a couple other ones that are in the, so far that have been my favorite but it's hard to pick they're all so cute I just I can never decide yeah. It's true. And whenever you post the ones where you're like, okay, here's the collection, pick your favorite one. So- I, I would, I would always be like, why are you asking this? I can't choose. It's so hard. And even like, I thought maybe like doing the color um, categories yeah. and like the ones from there, I thought that was kind of easier to pick your favorites because it's not so overwhelming. Yeah, it's so true. It, it's like when you see them all together, you're just like, there's so much cuteness in one photo. I can't even take it. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, that's cute. Wait, that's cute. That's one. That I like. Yeah, oh. that's so great. So when you design your stuff, how do you go about that process? Do you just have the idea and go straight into making it? Or do you kind of draw it out of what you want it to look like and then go off of that? 
So I kind of do, I draw them out. Mm-hmm. I do go to Pinterest, but I look up um, like kawaii clip art. <gasps> Me too. That's what I do. It's the best thing because you get so many ideas. <laughs> they um, do all the work for you and you just got to crochet it. <laughs> oh. So my, um, I have a one Pinterest board. It's a like my secret one. So I can just throw all of my ideas in there. Um, it just has tons of clip art images and I just kind of open up a couple different tabs one day and then I'm like oh I'm gonna do this and I'll start like I have a page in my notebook where I'll draw out a couple of different ones and then kind of like if one sticks out to me then that's the one I go to like yeah. I start designing it and it's funny like I design it in my head at the same time so I'll think of an idea like with my list that I have I'm like oh I really want to make this thing and then I'll just kind of zone out for a second and I'll just <laughs> be like designing like okay I need to do this shape I need to do that that color would work okay like oh, I do like, that too process it's I'm fun. glad I'm not alone in that because I like sometimes when I come up with a design idea um I will like I'll do the same thing where I zone out and my mm-hmm. husband will be talking to me and I'm just all like I won't even hear, I'll just hear like noise, but I won't hear what he's saying. And then I'll just, I'll just be like breaking down. Okay. If I'm going to make this garment, I need to do it in, okay. I need this square. And then I need like to do the sleeves at this point. I want the shape to be like this. Or if I'm doing like amigurumi, I'm like, okay, I need this shape of arm, this shape of arm. And I like, even cause I've been doing it for so long, I'm like, Mm -hmm okay, I know how many stitches I'm going to do for everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's the whole thing. Like, cause that's all I, I'm really is all I've ever done. Um, I mean, I do know how, I know how to knit and I've crocheted other things, but like, that's just like my go-to. So I know how to get certain shapes and it's just kind of like, okay, I have to build up to this increase and then I have to decrease here. And it's just, when you've done it for so long, you kind of just, it's like, I could do it in my sleep. It's <laughs> like, so true. I will... I'll oh. stay up at night, like, laying in bed, and I'll just, like, come up with a design. Like, last night, I came up with, like, a new, like, cardigan design. And so, in my head, I was trying to break down how I would do this intricate design thing. Mm-hmm. And I'll just, like, stay up sometimes, just, be like, figuring out new designs and what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, I'm always in the middle of counting, and I'm like, wait, hang on, like, I'm doing this. Yeah, and yeah. Just, don't talk to me I, right now. I'm figuring out how many stitches till I increase. <laughs> <laughs> but designing them. They're so much fun, and, I mean, it makes me happy, so. Yeah. yeah it really matters. And you can really, I feel like you can really see that in your designs, like, all of your designs always make me smile and I'm always excited to see them. And you just can tell that you love doing it. And just like, even like seeing like this, like my little sunflower you made me, like I can just tell how much like you love doing this. And it's just I mean, so cute. I will say the sunflower takes a long time. To oh, it does. <laughs> I, I, I totally get it. I was like, when I got it, I was like, Oh, it's so cute. I know how many hours this takes. And there's that it's cute. funny, like, I love making the flowers. And they're so much fun to make, but they just take a long time to make. Maybe I should, you know, cut back on my, my details. But I feel like details are what make it stand out and make it look really good. Yes. So I will go that extra yeah. mile to make something look look better (laughs) yeah and you can really tell I think when people don't pay as much attention to the details and something's just more thrown together whereas like I I can really tell like I was when I got it I even just because I've done this myself so long myself (laughs) designing I was able to just like figure out all the shapes and what you did which my husband thought was really funny that I just started breaking it down (laughs) yeah I'm like oh yeah okay so here on the back then she made a circle but then she did a little, she made the stem by just crocheting on the bottom here and making it go in the round. And <laughs> But I I think, like, it, it just definitely, people think that simple designs are sometimes really simple, but a lot of times there's a lot of detail and effort that yeah. goes into making it have that clean look. Yeah, it definitely takes, I mean, 
The minis don't take me that long to make, depending on what it is. I do, they are smaller, so the details have to be a little bit smaller. So that means mm-hmm. I'm like really trying to get it perfect. Yeah. But with other things, it's easier just to kind of like, okay, these are the details I want to nail down and just mm-hmm. kind of go from there. But I will say that people think I just crochet things in like an hour and I'm like, well, one, I get distracted easily, and two, um, I have two dogs, so they need my attention, and I'm just kind of like, yeah. pace, pretty much. I never time myself, because that would be horrible. <laughs> I know, I would get too depressed if I knew how much time, like, I'm like, it, because I take a lot of breaks, I, it stretches it out. My whole thing is, what if I time myself making the sunflower, and it takes, okay, say, for instance, it takes three hours. And then the next time I time myself, and it takes me like six, then I'm going to feel <laughs> terrible that it took me that long. That's so, so true. Myself. Yeah, yeah, you're like, I, I don't need to know. <laughs> so, when you, so talking about that, when you do one of your shop updates with mm-hmm. all of your Ami, like how much in advance do you do those? Or do you pick like ones that are pretty quick to make so that you can make a lot of them? Sometimes just depends on what's more popular. Um, the donuts and the mugs have always been one of those things where people love buying those, and they're fine to make. It's just sometimes I get bored making those. So yeah. It's like, uh, I don't really want to make them that time. <laughs> um, I understand that. <laughs> but shop updates just kind of happen randomly. I don't have like a set time or a day or a like mm-hmm. a week. You know, I just don't plan those things it just kind of depends on what my schedule and life is like because this is my full-time job so it's just kind of like well I can make things when I want to make them exactly Um, so I do try to make things um like ahead of time and I'll just kind of stockpile some stuff but my only downfall with that is sometimes things don't sell so that I'm stuck with the item and it will sit there for a while before it sells yeah Um, before, like a couple years ago, when I first had started my shop, so like I want to say in like 2016, 2017, when I was when my shop really started taking off, I was doing made to order, and as m- fine as that was, it just was too much because then I would say like, oh, I don't want to have like one of this item, like I want a couple of them, so yeah. then I would have like ten different items with like four quantity of each, mm-hmm. and so then. I'm busy for two weeks straight so it was just kind of I I wish I could do made to order but I just feel like right now it's kind of easier just to do ready to ship because then it's already done people yeah. buy it and I just have to package it and then that's it I don't have to worry about anything else it's true it, it takes it sometimes when you do I've noticed when I've done made to order stuff sometimes it just takes the joy out of it because yeah. you're not like even though, yes, okay, you want to make money from what you're selling, it also kind of takes a joy out of it because you're like, oh, I have, am, to do like, this. I have to do this and I have this deadline. Whereas if you've got the stuff already made, then you can just be like, oh, yeah, whenever exactly. it sells, that's good. And I think that's why I kind of transitioned from that. Um, it was sometime last year that I just started doing, I think it was when I moved. Um, it was just easier just to have a ready-to-ship sale. Um, during Christmas, I think, was it last year or the year before? I don't remember when it was, <laughs> but during Christmas, I did some made to order things and it mm-hmm. was not pretty. Like I was not sleeping. I was up all night, oh, things done. And it was just kind of like, why am I doing this? Why yeah, yeah. Am I doing this myself? So that's where I kind of transitioned how I do things. And I, mm-hmm. I don't take custom orders, um, as much as I wish I could. It's just sometimes people just want things that I've already made and it's like okay well I can do that it's just I'm not doing that right now like I'm not you know what I mean yeah exactly yeah because there's a lot of time that goes into yeah each one of those and like I had when I did my market that I was at last year I had all these big ideas if I was going to make a ton of amigurumi Mm -hmm. and I was going to make all these ice cream cones but then once I got around to actually working on it it was so slow because there were so many details that went into making them that it was didn't even prove worth staying up and doing that. It was better to make other items other things, instead. Yeah. yeah. And that's my whole thing, too, is, like, I don't want to make things that aren't going to sell. 
Mm -hmm. Um, There's a couple items that I know, like, aren't, like, my biggest seller. Um, But that's just how it is. I mean, I just kind of roll with it. And if things sell, then things sell. If they don't, then I'll just hold on to it and (laughs) keep it in the (laughs) shop. And I think there were a couple things in my shop for, like, three months that hadn't sold. I just left them there. I was like, somebody will eventually buy them. And if not, then I'll just donate them to somebody who really wants them. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because I'm not, I really don't have like the space to do Mm -hmm. like to display all of my things. There are some, like I have things around, but it's not like, you know, my 100 minis, all of those are in a um, clear container. And I don't even know what to do with them. Yeah, my uh-huh. my candies are in a plastic bag right now, and I made them into keychains so that I could sell them. <laughs> I just don't know what to do with them. Like some of them, I don't want to sell. Just yeah, they are like super special. Like some, because during the 100 days, um, like certain little events happen, yeah. so I would do something that would correspond with what was happening. Um, so I wouldn't want to get rid of that one, like, just yet. I mean, obviously I can live without it, but, but I just don't want to get rid of them. Yeah, like, each piece has a memory, and it makes it more special, like, when you can connect those memories to it, and that's really cool. So, if someone were wanting to get into, like, starting to design amigurumi, what would be, like, some of the tips that you would suggest for them or starting points of where to begin designing those? Just kind of, I mean, I just say jump in. Don't be scared to start designing things. Even if you are familiar with amigurumi, like, I feel like you kind of know the basis of, like, how to do things. So yeah, yeah. If you know how to make a circle, then you can <laughs> make anything. <laughs> so true. If you can go in the round, you've got this. <laughs> It's so easy once you know how to do that. Um, yeah. But I just say dive in. Like, don't be scared to start designing. Um, it's just one of those things where everyone kind of starts out somewhere, and you just kind of have to go with it. You know, if you want to design, just kind of just do it. Yeah. <laughs> so true. So, it is. I mean, when I first started designing, I was like, I don't know if this is even good enough. Like, who's going to like this? And it was kind of like my stuff was not the best, but like I just kept at it, you know. Yeah. You get better if you keep on practicing. It's with any hobby, really. I mean, I was not That's a great, true. and I just kept on doing it, and now I'm like, oh yeah, okay. Even though I'm not like the best knitter, and I freak out if I drop a stitch, but I mean, <laughs> I do too. I'm like, wait, no, come back, come back, get oh, back on I, my needle. Like, I stop everything. Everyone has to stop. Like. Drops to stitch. We have to hold. <laughs> I remember I when I was first learning how to knit, and I had like four stitches dropped off of my needle. They just had like slid off, and it felt like the end of the world. Awesome. I was like, really "How am I gonna do this? How am I gonna get these back on?" <laughs> was, I was terrified. I was knitting a sweater, and I was almost done with the front panel. And I had dropped a stitch somewhere. Oh. And then I thought, okay, I have to go pick it back up. So I had to, like, unknit back to the row. And then, like, you know, I don't even think unknit is the word. I had to do that, too. I had to. I had to do all of it all over again. Yeah, and it was just, when it takes a while to do, it feels so painful. And you're just sitting there very carefully, like, trying not to drop a stitch. And I remember I had done, I got all the way back and I fixed it. But then when I started knitting again, then I went to the next row, I looked and my stitch was twisted. And so oh, I've done that. I'm not a great knitter. I don't know some of these things. So I had to go to YouTube to figure all this stuff out. Luckily, I fixed it and it felt like, I felt like a million bucks. I was like, I can do anything now. <laughs> like, give me another yeah. stitch. I'll knit another one. Yeah. I feel that way, like, that applies to most crafts of when you, like, make a mistake, and once you learn how to fix it, or once you learn how to do a new technique, you're like, I can do this. I can do anything. And, I mean, the nice thing with crochet is that you don't drop stitches. I I love that about crochet. It's the best thing. I really, somebody asked me, he's like, well, what's the difference? And I'm like, well, you got two needles, and then you have a hook. I'm like, 
but knitting is just kind of easier. You don't drop stitches, you know? Yeah. I, I know that it does use more yarn, but... I, yeah, I love that with crochet that you get to just, you you don't have to worry about dropping those stitches. And I feel like in a lot of ways it's more forgiving. Like there's differences in the way that all the stuff yeah. comes out. But I, I, I love both crafts, but I crochet, like I can do knitting. If I'm doing basic stitches, I can do it without looking a lot yeah. easier than crochet just because the needles find each other. Yeah, um, with- and, but with crochet, I, I, it's not, especially if I'm doing amigurumi, I can't do that. Oh, yeah. I have to be. I'm, like, always watching it. It's yeah. Just... my, I'll be watching TV and making stuff, and then my, and because, like, I can listen, and, like, I've watched yeah. enough TV to figure out what's going on, but my husband will, like, hit me on the shoulder, and he'll be like, Claire, look, Claire, look at that, or if you're watching something with subtitles or people are speaking in another language, he's now started <laughs> saying, <laughs> reading the <laughs> subtitles out loud to me while we're watching TV because I got to pay attention to my stuff. That's and I was so like, funny. I mean, like, um, whenever I'm crocheting and my husband and I are watching something, I always, like, he'll he'll pause it, rewind it so I can watch what happened. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm listening. You yeah. know, I... I used to just sit and let Netflix go with, like, one of my favorite shows and just let it go as I would crochet and I would just listen. But then I'm just kind of like, I could be listening to, like, podcasts. I could listen to audiobooks. Like, I can do so many different things. Um, I do listen to music occasionally, but I feel like that distracts me. And then I get on my phone and do something else besides yeah. crochet. So it's just, yeah, I love yeah. crochet. It's just <laughs> me too. It makes I, I, I always want to crochet and like I try to take rest days and even on my rest days I'm crocheting. So I'll like crochet something that's not necessarily a design, but that's like a personal project of someone else's pattern because I yeah. just always have to be doing it. Thing, <laughs> because I used to um I still do. I just don't have enough time to do it. Like I cross stitch. Oh yeah, I do that too. There's that, and it's just like that's always fun. But I'm like I'd rather be crocheting something me too <laughs> me too <laughs> so what are some like going back on the topic of amigurumi what are some of like the basic patterns that you or like good starting patterns that either you've designed or that you've seen other people make um that are good for beginners doing something I don't really like the thing is, I don't always make things from other people's patterns, like other amigurumi people, because it's like, I can make something like that, too. So it's not it's like, true. I try to, but it's not always, like, in my schedule to do it. Um, as far as, like, my stuff, I do, um, since my book came out, I have had people ask me that are complete beginners that have no idea what they're doing. Um they ask me, like, okay, I'm learning, and what is an easy pattern? And I always say that things in, like, in a market or, like, the bakery section, because they're just round objects, like a tomato yeah. or an onion, um, the blueberries. Like, they're small items, but they are simple round shapes. Yeah, yeah, like so your cookie. You did learn if you're a beginner. Yeah, your cookies and your macaroons would, mm-hmm. are great beginner ones because it's just making a circle yeah and that's all it is so it's, it. yeah I mean there's some little techniques like um if you don't know like how to to crochet in the back loops if you're just starting out like there's some little lingo that people might not know but I feel like things that are just regular small like round objects are great to start out with I mean that's where you're gonna really learn how to do increases and decreases that's your main thing yeah yeah as close to a round ball as you can get the easier as a beginner that it's going to be and it's super challenging when you're first starting out because I know for me when I first started making amigurumi and when I was making that weird shaped dog I didn't know that you're supposed to put a stitch marker at the beginning of a round because that if you don't do that and you're like doing your increases at different spots, then yeah. your thing's going to get really weirdly shaped like mine did. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely like I always stitch markers are like the your best friend. I say that in the book. It's like they're your best friend. You want to have them, even if you have like a safety pin or because yeah, I used yeah. to use safety pins. That's what I, I had. Used to 
I bobby like, pins all the time. <laughs> yeah. And that's just one thing that you always want to keep track of. But I feel like just basic shapes, you just kind of want to start off simple and just kind of go from there. Yeah. Yeah. And even I, I've seen like, if you are even wanting to make something that's not necessarily a circle, but you still want to make amigurumi since it's just a 3D, 3D crocheted object, you can just do like a square. You can crochet a square <laughs> and then you can start crocheting along the edge of it and just make yeah. a cube and stuff. Uh, that's what I did with the toast that oh, I made. Oh, yeah. Toast, and uh-huh. I just did back and forth, just a flat square, and then you just kind of pick up the yarn, like the little sti- like the loops on the outside edge, and you just crochet into those. And yeah, so it's yeah. easy to kind of give like little round, sh- like, how do you want to say it? Like little round spots on the actual item. So it's not yeah. just... Yeah, yeah. I I think it's really fun to it's fun to learn how to do amigurumi and it's not as like yeah, there's some different techniques involved, but for the most part I've found that it's very similar to yeah. doing normal crochet. And you're using all the same terms, you're just doing it in a circle instead. And I feel like people that do just garments, they're so afraid of amigurumi. They are. Like it's not that hard if you know if you know how to do a single crochet and an increase or a decrease like you can do amigurumi like so it's true really simple it's not as hard as people make it out to be it really is not it's not yeah and I think people get so intimidated and like they don't want to do it because they feel like it's just hard because everyone says it is but it's really not yeah yeah I think it's- <laughs> like once you have practice you're gonna say it's not hard but it's starting out it was kind of like okay I kind of understand how to do this. I mean, my little sister, she started to crochet stuff, and she's like, oh, yeah, I know how to do this now. I'm like, oh, my gosh. (laughs) Yay. I feel so proud as a big sister that she started to crochet. Yeah. Or some of my patterns, and I'll be like, here, have some patterns. (laughs) She's like, do you have this one? And I'm like, that was from three years ago, and I'll go back into my notebooks, and I'll find the pattern, and I'm just like, I can't give you that pattern. It's embarrassing. (laughs) I'm like, it's not even there, so I can't give it to you. Like, I'd be, I'd be embarrassed. Even though you're my sister, I'd be embarrassed to give this to you. Well, it's funny. She asked me for, um, I made a dog, I think it was last year or like the year before. I made a dog and it was just like, kind of like a, it was like a handheld size. It was pretty decent size. And she asked me for it a couple weeks, like a couple months ago. And I was like, yeah, let me, let me look at it and I'll see like, I have to, I don't have it typed up because um, I just write it all out in my sketchbook. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I went and I found that there was a head, there was part of a body, there was no muzzle, there was no ear, there was no, there was like half the pattern there. And I was just, I flipped through and I looked and I'm like, where'd the rest of it go? <laughs> it was like, I started with a certain shape, like the head and all this other stuff, but then uh-huh. I had something that was similar shaped, so I just oh, went. Oh yeah that pattern but I never made a note to myself so I really can't make it again (laughs) yeah I always think I'm gonna remember it I'm gonna remember those details and it's fine like I can tell just by looking at it what I did but then I'll like look at it and I'm like wait now what did I do oh rats I have to write like even if it takes me like an extra minute I will write down like specific details I'm just like, just do it. You know that it's, you're going to be like, what did I do for this one spot? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not- I've, I've found what's helped me a lot with writing like my, my amigurumi patterns and stuff is I have Google Docs on my phone. And so I will just type up the pattern as I'm going, which helps me a lot. It saves me a ton of time so I don't have to type it up later. And then I can just edit it a lot easier and that has I write out all my things I don't know I just like having like I'll have my notebook in front of me and I'll just start like because I'll have the drawing next to it so then I'll kind of like go off of there and then I'll just kind of fill in but I always have to make sure that I'm right like I'm not going too far ahead with my rows because then I have to go back and I'm like wait row 17 yes what was this one (laughs) like I have always like 
flip my thing over and I'll just start counting the rows so that I'm like, I don't remember what row I'm on. I didn't like, make a note. <laughs> counting the rows, but then like you don't know if that's the specific row. So then you start having to count like the stitches and you have to kind of like look yeah. at it and see if there's an increase yeah. there. Just, just make sure you're writing things down. That's like the biggest tip. If you're going to yeah. be doing make sure you write down your pattern it's so <laughs> true I will definitely look and I'll be like oh wait okay there's a little increase there and there's an increase there and there's all these stitches in between okay that means I'm on this row okay <laughs> yeah it's it's just easier if you write it down it's so true so I was also wondering how did you get started with writing your book was that something where someone just like approached you and was like do you want to write a book for us? Or how did that all happen? Because I think that's awesome that you already have a, a published book. book. <laughs> it's crazy. I still don't even believe that I have a book. I mean, it's still surreal going into Joanne's and seeing it on the bookshelf. And I'm just like, that's me. <laughs> so crazy. So um, my publishers actually reached out to me. Um, I had no intention of writing a book yet. And it was, you know, one of those things you always dream of happening. And, um, I just moved into this apartment and I had like was getting all my stuff set up and I had my like work area over here and then I got an email from my publishers and I told them about this too I said you know it looked like a spam email like it did not seem like it was real and but the at the end she had written like a little note about how I had just moved and so she was one like saying like I hope your move went well and so like I knew that it was for sure like something that was Mm -hmm. real um, they just asked if I was interested in doing um, kind of like a craft book. They mainly publish um, coloring books, adult coloring books. That's where oh, they got okay. breaks. So um, they were kind of branching out from that and going with some other like DIY type things. So um, uh, yeah. tape. they're also coming out with an embroidery book um, oh, cool. in like the same series as mine. So mine is the first mm-hmm. of the um, Modern Makers series and they have an embroidery one coming out. Um, so they just kind of wanted to do something different and they asked if I would be involved in it. And I said, that sounds cool. But at first, like I thought, oh, this is probably going to be like a collaboration with a couple other people, like not just me. Uh Um, and then I had all my, my calls and, and everything. And it was like, no, this is your book. Like, this is all you, (laughs) like, you have to like have all these patterns in there. Um, so it was definitely, it was a huge like what <laughs> I had no idea that it was going to happen but it's just it's surreal I just can't <laughs> it's so cool and I like when you sent me the copy I was so excited looking through it I really love the variety of patterns that you used in there that you've got animals you've got plants um food stuff you've got such a good variety for all different types of Amigurumi. That's kind of like what makes it unique. Like other mm-hmm. Amigurumi books, like they all have like a certain topic. And I guess like that is good if that's what you're looking for. But I feel like some yeah. people do not yeah. want a full book about all about dogs. Um, it's true. So like kind of going off and having the different sections was easy for people to kind of like say, oh, my my kids have a, a play kitchen. I'm going to make all of these play foods for them. Or like you have a nursery and you want to yeah. do something aquatic themed or you just you want to have plants at your desk. I yeah. Mean, that's where I, that's where my, the plants went. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think it's good that it, there's something that everyone can relate to because not everyone wants to make um, animals. I know that I was immediately drawn to like the food cause I love to bake mm-hmm. and the plants cause I love plants and crocheted plants are always so cute. Yeah. And it's like, sometimes we don't have the space or children to give animals or other things too so it's nice when I like that you had that like really big like thing in there um hard coming but, up with this too I was like the sections <laughs> I had to make sure I was like they have to be even like one the market section can have so many different things but I had to limit myself <laughs> yeah how did you um get your design ideas for that like how did you come up with the ideas for those sections was did you like bounce ideas off of someone or um, just so come to you? 
I had, um, with my publishers, I had an editor and a designer. So we would have weekly calls, just the three of us, and we would kind of bounce ideas off of like what we were going to do in terms of like breaking up the book into the different sections. Okay. Um, so it was kind of like, we want to do these because you already have, um, like looking at my Instagram at that time, oh, like you can yeah. see I had different plants and I had some food items. So it was kind of like, okay, we have these, so let's put those in the book and then mm-hmm. kind of build around and see what else we can add. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because I was like, how did you come up with those sections? Because it's such a big variety. <laughs> Some of them only had, like, the garden section only had, uh, I want to say, it had the sunflower, and then it also had the little cactus. But the, the tulip and the succulent planter, those ones were all designed for the book. So oh, okay. once we figured out, like, we had the five different sections and what were in those and if we needed more that's when I had to start like design like coming up with different things for those sections which was fun because it was like actually I'm designing something completely new and it's like you can only get it in the book you can only get it in whimsical stitches it's not available anywhere else yeah I I really like that that makes it unique and Mm -hmm. special and it's a good incentive to buy your book it is (laughs) I actually can't even sell those patterns by themselves. Like that's um, oh, my wow. Patterns. So it's like those are only supposed to be in the book. Um, because if, even if I had something that was already in my shop and we were going to take that pattern and put it in the book, I couldn't sell it in my shop. So I had to like, that's where I usually, I came up with like designing other things because I didn't want to yeah. get patterns that were already selling. Mm-hmm. So it's just easier to have like, oh, I'm going to design this. But I do get people asking for certain ones and I'm just like, I unfortunately like it's only in whimsical stitches, but you get a really good deal for I think there's about thirty patterns in the yeah. book. Only like twenty bucks on Amazon. So you're getting yeah. a good deal. Um and that's what I tell people. I'm like, you get a ton more patterns. <laughs> like if I was charging individual for this. You wouldn't want to get them. <laughs> <laughs> Especially like with the minis, it's just so much easier to do a full ebook. Where yes. they're all together. Yeah. Um, other than individual. I mean, could you imagine how much work an individual pattern oh. would do? That would take <laughs> it would, so I just get it make, gives me heartburn just thinking it about it. Be, I mean, doing the one hundred minis and I turned it into an ebook, so it's just a big huge PDF file. It's it's not anything fancy. But yeah, yeah. It is design nice. Like I had my husband, he's a um a whiz on the computer and so he designs my patterns for me so I'll like type them out and I'll just give him all the pictures and stuff and he like does all the layouts and stuff for it so, um he actually helped me with that whole entire ebook so I mean he ended up moving his desk out here like next to me so that he could be sitting there and like if I'm working he could just be like hey can you look at this and I would look and then we'd kind of bounce ideas off of each other but Aww. the ebook is like it's just easier having all 100 together. I don't want to separate them. It's just yeah. nice things they, together. They belong together. They belong yeah. together. So will you be doing another ebook for this new set? Yes. Of eyes? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, I mean, it's just, it's what's easiest. People wanted me to publish the, um, the first set into an actual book. And oh. as much as I would love to do that, um, writing Whimsical Stitches was was really time consuming. I mean, it was, I had a three month chunk of time. That's oh, what I wow. on the book for three months. So I didn't work on anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, that's a pretty decent amount of time. I didn't get to make anything for my shop because I just did not have time to, I think yeah, I made yeah. restock, but it was, it's just, it was easier to just put it as a PDF, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. as much as I would love it in a hardcover, it's just like, it just it takes a lot of time. And like, especially because with my book, it's actually printed overseas and then they have to bring oh. it over here. So it would just take, so it would take longer. Um, I mean, I finished my book, I, my months were like August through October, like the end of August is when I like started writing everything. So I had like September, October, November, uh-huh, uh-huh. and then I was done. And then we did all the designing stuff in December, and all of the pr- the stuff went to the printers in January. And then my oh, wow. book came out in June. 
So, I mean, it was a couple, it was a few months before it actually like came back to the States, but yeah. I just, people won't wait that long because I've even thought of it and I'm like, maybe I could kind of publish this into a smaller book. Um, but people are like, I'm not going to wait six months for your book to come out. I've had people tell me that and I was just like, okay, well, then I'm not going to do that. Fine, um, fine, I will do this. <laughs> Even waiting the 100 days because I just feel like it's easier to publish all patterns at once rather than one oh, a day. Yeah, um, no, that'd be it's I, easier. It's a lot of work. I because yeah. I did with my 31 days of candy, I would publish the pattern that day. So mm-hmm. I was making a new blog post for every single day yeah. for 31 days, and that was a lot of work. It is a lot. It's basically your your whole life is just you're making a pattern, you're taking the photos, writing up the pattern. Even if the pattern is super simple, yeah. you still have to, like in a blog post, you still have to describe the yarn. You have to describe mm-hmm. some of the techniques you're using and do all these different things. So It's, not, it's time consuming. It's That's not just figuring yeah. It's easier just to kind of like do all of them. Although this time I am going to do like, I didn't do it the past couple of weeks, but I'm going to do like um, a week where I just sit and at the end of the week, I'll type up all the patterns for that week. So I don't have to be doing a hundred patterns at the end. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I was sitting for like a week just typing um, and like kind of crocheting in between, but it was just one of those things where I dug myself a hole and now I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pull a day ahead and now type up your patterns like at the end of the week. Yeah. It'll be good. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, we're almost approaching the end of our time with this interview. Um, so what are some last tips or tricks that you would offer people who are nervous about making amigurumi but want to um, or people who want to design? What are some things that you would just like to end with sharing for people? I say just kind of like stick to what you like, um, mm. do your own thing, even though you kind of have other people to inspire you by, um, just kind of like, if you want to make something, just make it. And even if it's completely different than what everyone else is making, just do it. Yeah. Uh, and don't be afraid because if you're going to be afraid, it's holding you back and you're really, you're not going to get anywhere then. And that's what I had to learn quick, not to let anything hold me back, just to be like, just do it. Just put it out there, and if no one likes it, then oh well, then you move on to another day. Exactly. Then you do the next design, the next yeah. idea, and you, you continually grow as you make things. Exactly. You, your designs change. You get better at them. It, it's, it's a process. Practice makes perfect is a, a way over you saying, but it is absolutely true. <laughs> it really is. I know people always say, like, oh, practice makes perfect, but it's, it's, it's a true statement. Like, you have to practice in order to get good at something. Yeah, so true, so true. Well, thank you so much, Lauren, for coming on the show. I love getting to talk about Amigurumi with you, and it's so fun hearing more of your story and your process, and I I love getting to chat. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. Thank you so much for having me. You're so welcome. Uh, Have a wonderful day, and I will see you on Instagram. All right, see you on Instagram. Bye. So much for watching this video be sure to like it below if you enjoyed watching it and hit the subscribe button if you never want to miss out a video from me and also check out my other videos and tutorials on my channel see you next time